Hello everyone and welcome to our series on Excel VBA Automation. In this tutorial, we will be focusing on automating clicks on various types of buttons on websites using Excel VBA. This is a continuation of our journey into the powerful world of web automation, where we aim to simplify and streamline our interactions with web elements. Whether you're a beginner just starting to explore VBA or someone looking to expand your existing skills, this tutorial is designed to provide you with practical, easy-to-follow steps. We'll be working with a mock website to demonstrate how VBA can interact with different types of buttons, from standard HTML buttons to more complex JavaScript-activated ones. So get comfortable, and let's dive into the exciting world of web automation with Excel VBA. Here in Module 1, we have a pre-written script that we'll use to demonstrate how to easily interact with various types of buttons. To show you exactly how our VBA script will perform, I've set up a mock website with a collection of buttons designed specifically for this demonstration. Let's head over to the website now. As you can see, we have several different buttons. You'll notice each button is clearly named starting with HTML button, Input button, Submit button, and so forth to signify its function and the type of button it is. I'll click on each of these buttons manually first to show you the confirmation message that pops up, indicating a successful click. Now that we have seen these confirmations in action, it's time to put our VBA script into action and automate these button clicks. But first, if you haven't already set up the necessary references within your VBA environment, Let's do that now to ensure everything runs without a hitch. Head over to the Tools menu in the VBA Editor. Once there, select References to open the list of available libraries. You'll want to scroll through and find Microsoft Internet Controls and Microsoft HTML Object Library. Make sure both of these are checked. After ticking the appropriate boxes, click OK to lock in your choices. With these references activated, your script will be well equipped to interact with Internet Explorer and our web elements seamlessly. For those who are new to using Internet Explorer with VBA, let's take a moment to understand what each line of our setup does. This is essential groundwork that enables us to interact with websites programmatically. Firstly, we declare two object variables with the line dim IE as object, comma, doc as object. IE will represent the Internet Explorer application, and doc will be used to refer to the document within the Internet Explorer. The next line of code is where we create an instance of the Internet Explorer application. This tells VBA to start a new session of Internet Explorer that we will control with our code. We then make the Internet Explorer window visible to us with IE.visible equals true. While it's possible to run the browser in the background, Having it visible is immensely useful for debugging and observing the script's actions in real time. After that we navigate to the specified URL. This command instructs Internet Explorer to load the website we'll be interacting with. Following this we use a loop that effectively tells the script to pause until the website has fully loaded. It's a critical step to ensure that all elements are accessible for automation. Once the website is loaded, Set doc equals IE dot document assigns the content of the website to our doc variable. With doc, we are equipped to access and manipulate the HTML elements on the website directly. So in summary, these lines of code set the stage for our VBA script to interact with a website through Internet Explorer, from opening the browser to ensuring we have the web content ready for automation. Having set up Internet Explorer for automation, we're now ready to run the code up to the first stop I've placed on the initial wait function. This stop is strategically positioned just before the script executes its first line of code that interacts with our mock website, which in this case involves clicking on the HTML button. By confirming that everything is functioning correctly at this early stage, we can move forward with confidence through the rest of our automation script. So, let's start the script and stop at this first crucial checkpoint to ensure that our Internet Explorer session is ready and waiting for our commands. Great! Now that we have Internet Explorer open and displaying our mock website, let's move on to the actual button clicking part of our script. For that, we will rely on a method known as Query Selector. We learn about it in our previous videos. This method is powerful and versatile 
making it one of the most reliable tools for web automation in VBA. The query selector method allows us to target elements on a website using CSS selectors. This is particularly useful because it enables us to identify elements with great precision. The code line is designed to find and click on the HTML button on our mock website, but how does this line actually work? The query selector method is looking for an element that matches the CSS selector we provide. In our case, the part of the code line in parentheses is the selector. This selector specifies that we want to find a button element with a class attribute that includes button button red. Now let's inspect the HTML button on our mock website. As you can see, the HTML button element has the class attribute button button red. Our query selector method uses this information to identify it. Once the correct button is found, the dot click at the end of the code line is then used to simulate a mouse click on that button. Let's run this line of our script and observe as the VBA code automatically clicks the HTML button on our website. As you can see, the script successfully clicked the HTML button, just as we intended. This is a clear demonstration of how effectively the query selector method can be used to interact with web page elements. Now let's move on to the next button, a different type called the input button. Our script handles this button with a slightly different approach. Just like before, we're employing the query selector method, but this time we are targeting an input element, specifically one with a value attribute set to input button. So how does this work? The query selector method is versatile enough to locate various types of elements, not just button elements. In this case, it looks for an input type element where the value equals input button. This is how we ensure that the script targets the correct button, especially when there are multiple input elements. Let's inspect the input button on our mock website. Notice how the value attribute in the HTML matches exactly with the selector we provided in our script. While we could have targeted the button using its class attribute like before, I want to show you the adaptability of Query Selector. So, in this script, I'm choosing to click on buttons using a variety of approaches. This will demonstrate how you can employ Query Selector in different scenarios, making your automation scripts more flexible and robust. Let's now run this line of the script and watch as our code automatically clicks the input button. Great, it works flawlessly. We will now take a quick look at the next button called Submit button. The approach we take here is similar to the one we just used for the input button. We're again utilizing the query selector method. Much like we did with the input button, we're using the value attribute to identify the submit button on the page. Our query selector zeroes in on this element by searching for an input element where the value is set to submit button. We can confirm this on the website. Let's now run this line of our script and observe as it automatically clicks the submit button. As you can see, the submit button responds to our script just as expected, demonstrating the reliability and effectiveness of using the value attribute with Query Selector for web automation tasks. This method not only simplifies our script, but also provides a clear and straightforward way to interact with different button types. Now we come to the reset button, where our script takes a slightly different approach. This time, instead of using the value attribute as we did with the input and submit buttons, we're targeting the reset button based on its type attribute. So in the following code line targeting the reset button with the query selector method, we're looking for an input element that has a type attribute set to reset. This precise targeting ensures that our script interacts with the correct button, no matter what other attributes or values the button might have. Let's execute this line in our script and see the reset button in action.
As you can see, the reset button is clicked automatically, just as we intended. This again demonstrates the versatility of the query selector method in targeting elements by different attributes. By understanding how to use various attributes for targeting, you can create more adaptable and efficient web automation scripts. Our journey through the different types of buttons on our mock website brings us now to the image button. Unlike the previous buttons we've interacted with, this one uses an image as the clickable element. The type equals image attribute in the HTML makes it distinct and is what we use to target it in our script. In this line of code, the query selector method finds an input element with a type attribute set to image. This specificity ensures that our script precisely identifies and clicks on the image button, avoiding any interaction with other elements. Now let's run this line of the script and watch as it automatically clicks the image button. As you see, the image button is successfully clicked by our script. This is a great example of how we can target different types of buttons, even those that are slightly unconventional, like an image-based button. Let's move on to the next line in our script. The next button we are going to automate is the link button. It's essentially a hyperlink that navigates to Wikipedia's main page, but for our tutorial, we've styled it to look and behave like a button. To automate the click on our link button, it's crucial to understand the construction of our query selector line. We start with A, indicating that we're targeting an anchor tag, the HTML element typically used for hyperlinks. Next, we focus on the href attribute, which specifies the URL the link points to. We complete our selector by including the exact href value, in this case, the link to Wikipedia's main page, this href value is crucial in our query selector method to accurately target the button. Now let's run this line of the script and observe its effect. Great, it clicks the link button exactly as intended. This demonstrates the effectiveness of using the query selector method to target hyperlink elements styled as buttons. As we move to our final example, Pay close attention to how we handle the quotation marks in our script. This time, we're automating a click on a JavaScript button. In the code, we start with button, clearly indicating that our target is a button element. Then comes the segment onClick, which specifically focuses on the button's onClick attribute. It is key in defining the JavaScript action that occurs when the button is clicked. Following this, we have equals show message JavaScript, which precisely identifies the JavaScript function being called upon the click event. Together, these components form a complete instruction for our script to find and interact with the JavaScript button. The use of double quotation marks around the entire attribute value is vital for the script to correctly interpret it as one complete string. This specific quoting method becomes crucial especially because our JavaScript function, show message JavaScript, itself contains single quotation marks. By wrapping the entire attribute value in double quotation marks, we ensure that the script accurately recognizes and executes the command, despite the nested single quotes within the JavaScript function call. This careful attention to quotation marks is essential when scripting interactions with complex attributes like JavaScript functions. Now let's execute this final line in this tutorial. And there we have it. We have successfully navigated through various types of buttons on our mock website and automated clicks on each using Excel VBA. This tutorial has shown the power and versatility of VBA in automating interactions with web elements. With the knowledge gained today, you are now equipped to automate clicking on virtually any web button, expanding your capabilities in web automation significantly. As we wrap up this tutorial, I'd like to make a special request to all of you watching. If you're facing any specific challenges or topics in your VBA projects that you'd like me to explore in a future tutorial, please share them in the comments. I'll do my best to address them and help you out. Now thank you for watching. 
I hope this video has been enlightening and encourages you to explore more about web automation using VBA. If you have any questions or face any issues, feel free to drop a comment. And don't forget to like and subscribe if you found this tutorial helpful.